Hey what's up guys my name is Charlie today we're going to be reacting to some more nostalgia critic and it's going to be top 11 dumbest spider-man moments oh boy I absolutely loved the spider-man movies well the first three ones anyway the uh Tobey Maguire movies spider-man movies um a lot of people didn't like those people liked the newer versions but I've always enjoyed Tobey Maguire's performance in those three movies yes even the evil Peter Parker dance scene that was also totally awesome <laughs> totally dumb but totally awesome I do that every single time when I buy a new, uh, you know, suit or a new t-shirt or something. I do that sort of dance myself. I feel like a million bucks. But, uh, yeah, let's, uh, check out the video, shall we? Let's go. <laughs> and with any luck, I too can learn not to like every single movie I see. Thank, Thank you, Chester. Chester. <laughs> Chester. <laughs> Hello, I'm the nostalgia uh, work. I remember it so you don't have to. <laughs> and... Oh boy, he's a movie alcoholic. <laughs> he's a bad movie alcoholic. I kind of like Spider-Man 3. That's everyone's reaction, it's so true. <laughs> This is real. This is everyone's reaction. Well, okay, let me rephrase that. I like it about as much as I like the other Spider-Man movies. Yeah. Which, let's be honest, people, are stupid, stupid movies. Yeah. I mean, I love them. I really do. I In the same way it. that I love the first two Superman movies, even <laughs> though they were goofy. But they're just straight up silly. Then again, what do you expect when your main character looks yeah, like this? Yeah, Great true. This. <laughs> I guess I didn't understand why the last film got so ridiculed when it seemed like the other two movies had just as many weird moments. Mm. Granted, they all had some good action scenes and they did address the dilemmas of being a superhero, but are we just going to ignore the really dumb moments? All those strange <laughs> scenes that had us wondering if they were supposed to be funny or dramatic? It's hard mm. to tell sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. We hear about the guilt a college boy feels having maybe caused the death of his uncle, immediately followed by a giant octopus man putting together a death machine. What more you always for? go hand in hand. <laughs> Do they? These movies may be fun, but they were pretty loopy, too. Then mm. I'm here to count down the top 11 weirdest moments in the Spider-Man movies. Why top 11? Because I like to go one step beyond. So, sit back and enjoy the top 11 dumbest Spider-Man moments. Okay. This is gonna be fun. As I am a absolute lover. Oh, I had the evil be of Dragon Dance right there. <laughs> so dumb, but so awesome. Top 11 dumbest Spider-Man moments. Yeah, okay. Number 11. Number 11. Those friggin' American flags. Oh. Not like any American, I'm proud of my country. It's a great place to be mm. and I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. But after 9-11, we seem to really want to remind ourselves I heard this of had a lot of backlash, Spider-Man with the American Before flag. Before 9-11, there was an ad there was for Spider-Man that you actually that. can't see anymore. It was a teaser trailer that showed a bunch of thieves escaping in a helicopter. Mm. Sit back and enjoy the ride. Yeah. <laughs> sure, this is a video game. <laughs> between the World Trade Center. We back out and see the image of Spider-Man's eye and everybody goes nuts. They love it. It was a great trailer. Mm. There was even a poster that had that same image in Spider-Man's eyes. Damn. But after 9-11 happened, that trailer suddenly seemed inappropriate. Yeah, it was no shit. Obviously, Hell, it had to. Was that would have been so and sensitive. And not to sound like a conspiracy nut, but I think this scene was in the movie. I think this was the big reveal of Spider-Man. <laughs> you ever notice in the first film, he has no real big reveal, he's just sort of there? I think this is how they did it, but then cut it out at the last second. But again, I'm just speculating. So yeah, to make up for it, totally like every movie that came out right after 9-11, they put a <laughs> big American flag in there. Of course. And of course, the post-9-11 crowd loved it. Yeah, it's well, a bit hokey Spider-Man has American flag colors, red, to the emotions sort of blue, of the American people at the time. bit of white. But by the time the third film did <laughs> it, the gimmick so it's American welcome. It was years Spider later, so and now speak. it seemed like it was going from kind of forceful to uncomfortably forceful. I mean, he sort of blends in the American in flag. That Spider-Man's American. His freaking colors are red, white, and blue. Mm. How much more American can you get? Yeah, that's what I was oh, saying. Maybe yeah, this he, one's kind of nostalgic but that. we're just at the bottom of the list. And the there's stars is when he punches enemies, you know. Every time he punches someone, there's stars. <laughs> Number 10. <laughs> I don't know, let's make that shit up. <laughs> All those Number pointless 10, yeah. characters. Maybe in the comics these characters played a bigger role, but in the movies, they just seem to have no purpose but to show yeah. that these people 
well, we're put in the movie. Yeah. The teacher who eventually <laughs> becomes Lizard Man in the comics, I don't count because, well, he actually does help Peter out in the movies. But what about characters like Gwen Stacy? From what I understand, she had a really big role in the comics. In fact, she was supposed to be the one that was hanging on the bridge when the Green Goblin makes that big drop. I don't want to give anything away, but she's dead. In the movie, she's, <laughs> she's just sort fucked. of a throwaway character. <laughs> she's yeah, Peter dates her for a second, but then she just vanishes. It'd be cooler if maybe she was the first girlfriend, mm -hmm. and then maybe Mary Jane comes in, but I'm probably thinking too hard about it. How about Dr. Octopus's wife? You'd think her death would have, like, a huge impact on him. <laughs> but he's like... Yeah, it's cool. Oh, Rose is dead. Well, eh, whatever. he's Again, thinking about one. bringing her back, so... How about that so... thing I was working on? But you know. the biggest one to me has to be the astronaut from Spider-Man 2. This guy is not only an astronaut, but he's also the son of Peter's boss, Jameson. And yeah. he's also marrying Mary Jane. Those are some big-ass qualities about him. Yeah, what that's do you remember quite a resume. Not a goddamn thing. <laughs> You'd think this guy would be really interesting and probably play a big part seeing what an impact he makes on everybody. And I guess he really doesn't make an impact on anybody. Mary Jane and him share maybe two scenes together. Why does he look like he's from, like, Vampire Diaries together, or something like and that? And we never seen Vampire do anything Diaries, space um, What was the purpose uh, of this guy? Just Blood, someone from Mary like, Jane? Something like the Vampire Diaries weak. series. Actually, I always thought maybe he was going to be Venom. Wouldn't that make a lot of sense? Yeah, he You could have like him go into space, find vampire this thing, diaries. and then have him get vampire attached diaries, to him. But and he had reason to go after one. Peter. He stole his woman. Or vampire like Origins or something like that? from that 70s show and instantly putting a backstory together for him. At least this guy did have a backstory going. Like Nicholas, maybe? I can't remember the characters. I'm sorry. Hell, Bruce Campbell was more developed than him. That is all. Bruce Campbell. Oh, oh hell, fuck it, Bruce Campbell. There's also the daughter, the newspaper lady, the Green Goblin butler, Mary Jane's parents. All of them have Groovy. little to do with anything. <laughs> and when they do, it either leads to nothing or just comes out of nowhere. Mm. I think a guy who dresses up like a voodoo pincushion is enough to hold a movie, guys. <laughs> you don't need to develop all of these characters. Or, if you do, actually develop them! <laughs> Number nine. Number nine. The extras in Spider-Man 2. The extras. Sort of a weird thing to comment on, but have you ever noticed how hokey the acting was in Spider-Man 2? <laughs> Not really from the main actors. They held up okay. It was okay. About the I enjoyed extras, it. The people in the background. I don't know. They just never seem to talk right to me. It's a web. Yeah, that's weird. Go, Spidey, go! Yeah, that feels weird. Is she Spidey's girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. For that matter, does she kind of look creepy to you? She mm. freaking looks possessed. Possessed by the Spidey. <laughs> How about that weird guy in the elevator? Looks uncomfortable. It gets kind of itchy. <laughs> it rides up in the crotch a little bit, too. <laughs> yeah. How long are they gonna hold on this guy? <laughs> I played this some music. <laughs> it's so awkward. That's what I feel like when there's someone with the elevator with me. Remember it's just that awkward that teller? you're just sort of oh, that waiting. Boy of yours is a real hero. <laughs> it's ironic because he's Spider-Man. Mm. You also got this awkward firefighter. Yeah, some guts, kid. Some poor soul got trapped on the fourth floor. Damn. What is he, a Vulcan? Show some emotion, guy. For God's <laughs> yeah. sakes, they're firefighters. Don't they see dead people all the time? Some poor soul got trapped on the fourth floor. Oh, real nice, Lou. Just say that in front of the kid I just said has guts. <laughs> Maybe that would mess him up. Maybe he dresses up like a spider and saves people. You ever think of that, Lou? How about the train scene? I think the kids are the best actors here. He's mine! <laughs> you want to get to him, you got to go through me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and me. He's going to go through, through all of you. And me. And me! Yeah, uh, not me. I'd fucking run. <laughs> Plus, what the hell are Big Pussy and Dr. Katz doing there? I think my favorite, though, has got to be that screaming woman in the building Doc Ock is climbing. Yo. <laughs> Sounds oh like she's probably like a cheap flick of a scary Speaking movie which, or something that's like that. another possessed-looking face, isn't it? <laughs> Free deep. I don't know. Maybe another <laughs> nitpick, but the extras in this movie just never seem natural. To yeah, the but again, extras. This is a movie with an eight-legged doctor. How natural? Yeah, can get. I mean, Shame. can't really take it serious. Number eight. Number eight. The effects in Spider-Man One. As the mm. films moved on, the effects got better and better. 
By the mm. time two and three came around, they looked damn amazing. But in the first movie, they were pretty off. Uh, it was a right for the time, I guess. Did you really holding that car of children? No, Look at the no Green really. Goblin. Did you ever <laughs> believe he was really there flying around? No. I think the action figure looked more realistic. Oh, that it was a right for was the first time. Jumping. It did the trick. Yeah, that was so cheesy. It looks cheesy. like a reject from the Toy Story movies, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Now, some things were cool, like the Spidey sense, and even yeah. one or two moments of him swinging around. But most of the time, I just felt like I was watching the video game for the movie as opposed to the actual <laughs> movie itself. True. Good point. But we get the gist of it. There's a scene where he jumps from a smaller building all the way to one that seems three times its size. That's just how far can does. this guy jump anyway? <laughs> It's funny because the Spider-Man suit itself actually sort of looks computer generated. So you think it would transfer well when they actually do have to animate it. Well, in the later films it does, in the first film it doesn't. But hey, at least they did get better. I mean, it could be worse. You could go the route of the Ninja Turtle movie Yo, and God, no. make the effects worse and worse. God, to the no. point where Spider-Man was an animatronic puppet. <laughs> oh, Hopefully they Jesus. haven't gone that route. Oh, the fucking Spider-Man musical. Gone back in time. Number seven. <laughs> Little to no Venom inspired. I never understood 3. this. But I might have mentioned before I, I that I didn't read cool Spider-Man that much, Venom's but when awesome. I did, it always had Venom in it. He was my favorite Spider-Man villain, and everybody was hyped to see him in the third film. Yeah. I'll admit I thought Topher Grace Venom the movie is choice, disappointing, by the way. I I'll give it a miss. I don't think he did that bad. Nothing great, but nothing. I believe that Tom Hardy. And of course, when Venom finally did pop up, he looked great. The sharp teeth, yeah, the gooey black skin. He looked amazing. Yeah, he was a little scrawny, but he still looked great. And it was wonderful to finally see him on the big screen <laughs> for a whole ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. Like everyone else, I was pissed at how little screen time Venom got. Yeah. In the comic, Venom the suit totally tortured awesome. him and tore him apart, like he was hopelessly addicted to it. That <laughs> alone could fill an entire movie. But instead, he's mixed in with a ton of other wrestling plot points that he's only given a few minutes at the end. And even then, most of the time, his face is peeled back. Yeah, he has sharp teeth. Great, <laughs> go back to the monster! I'd probably be okay with it if I knew they were gonna bring him back for a sequel, but no. Spidey nukes the bastard and we never see him again. The flying spider balls! They should have just held off putting him in this movie, or maybe end it with the transformation of him and build it up for the next one. But no, he's there for a second and then Venom goes, Boom! What a fucking load! The one Spider-Man villain I think everybody wanted to see, and he gets nudged to the side by Emo Peter. Oh, yeah, Emo Peter. We'll I, guess I it love was Emo good Peter. to see He's him, totally especially awesome. seeing how they're not continuing this particular story chain anymore. Emo but Peter. man, like everyone else, I wish I could have seen a lot more of him. Mm. Not in that way. <laughs> oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Number six. Number six. Okay. That cock tease romance. Okay, <laughs> so Peter has the hots for Mary Jane. What do he do? What does he do? Acts like a pussy and never talks to her despite the fact that he lives right next door to her. How is True. that possible? She's got a boyfriend, but he breaks it up because, I don't know, he's a fucking idiot. Know, yeah. Does Peter move in? No. His best friend does. They continue to make googly eyes at each other until finally <laughs> Mary Jane breaks up with the best friend just as his father fucking dies. Wow. Ouch. So Ouch. now Peter moves in, right? No. He's afraid that if his enemies find out who he is, they'll try to kidnap her to get to him. Well, that's okay. Your Smart. stupid old aunt is for that. Mm. She's been held hostage more time than a video game princess. <laughs> yeah. So she hooks up with that astronaut <laughs> so guy who's so true. charming with his one <laughs> fucking line, and then Peter acts like he's interested again. Mm. She gets proposed to and even says yes, but still wants to be with Peter, which is great because he wants to be with her. Oh, wait. Now he doesn't. <laughs> Business first, bitch. So she finds out who he really is, and they agree they should stay separate because of the danger involved. But then she says, fuck me, Armstrong, I'm gonna go with the pussy in the red pajamas. When he warns her about all the dangers she could be in, she points out that even before she knew he was Spider-Man, she was getting fucking kidnapped all the time. Mm. So might as well have the sex. They finally get together, only to have Harry blackmail her into breaking up with him. Why? Because he'll kill Peter if she doesn't. But did she just forget that Peter and Spider-Man are the same person? Yeah. Just tell the friggin' idiot. Go yeah. up to him and say, hey, He's Harry's got his memory back. He's right <laughs> over there. Beat the shit out of him. The end. But no, she breaks up with him and never explains maybe, why. Maybe. What a shame! He maybe, was gonna marry her and they were gonna live in. Just keeping a know, dog hostage? Closet. Who knows? But that's okay, another random kidnapping will solve that. He saves her life, of course, and they end up dancing. <laughs> Did any of this bring them closer together? I don't know, but seriously, <laughs> get to me, counseling! The, the, yeah, the, the love story in this is weak. Number five. Dr. Octopus's robotic arm. Okay, why do these things have artificial intelligence? I mean, what's the point? AI. It's like giving yeah. AI to one of those robotic arms you get at the toy <laughs> store. 
There's no need for it. You push a button, mm. it grabs stuff. Easy. Couldn't that make you vulnerable to them? How right you are. Which is why I developed this inhibitor chip to protect my higher brain function. That can easily break with a tiny Instead of them <laughs> controlling me. And even then, how far does the AI go? In the movie, the AI convinces him to finish the experiment by robbing banks, killing doctors, and hanging old ladies out of tall buildings. <laughs> what crazy fucked up idiot invented these things? Yeah, Jesus. Oh yeah, the crazy fucked up idiot who yeah. stole the idol from Rears of Lost Star. <laughs> I guess he's sort of had it coming. But yeah, just to make it even goofier, the arms actually talk to him. Yeah, they don't say words, but they actually do talk to him. It's like a mechanical version of Lamb Chop's sing-along. <laughs> yes, weird. That is weird. What the hell do you think those things are even saying to him anyway? I Hello, no Octi. What do you think we should do today? Rob a bank. <laughs> dark for you, is it? I'm it's guessing it sort of speaks in his Hell, mind. The arms even scream with him when he finds out head. everything's gone wrong. No! <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, there's pseudoscience and then there's so so science. And this is just silly. Yeah. You know, I sort of miss my wife. Fuck her! Okay! <laughs> Fuck her. Uh, it's the war. <laughs> Nothing can stop the door. Number four. The dialogue from Spider-Man 1. Dialogue from... David Co-op is one of Hollywood's most famous writers. Mm. He's written big hits like Jurassic Park, yeah, I'm Death familiar Becomes with Her, his and work. Panic Room. But he's also written some major stinkers like War mm. of the Worlds, Kingdom of yeah. the Crystal Ooh. Skull, and The Lost World. To me, he seems like a better story man than he does a dialogue writer. And this really shows in Spider-Man. The story is actually pretty well paced and put together. Dialogue, on the other hand... And when she got out of the car, and you saw her for the first time, you grabbed me and said, Aunt May? Aunt May? Is that an angel? <laughs> Are you an angel? Ugh. Oh, Jesus. You have a knack for saving my life. I think I have a superhero stalker. Did I really just hear that? And what about my generous proposal? Are you in, <laughs> or are you out? It's you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. Okay, that's just straight up Adam West territory. <laughs> Even on the commentary, you can hear Kristen Dunst make fun of it. <laughs> that's, a, that's such a cheap line. Jameson, <laughs> you, you slime. Slime? Really? Um, you just called him slime? That's an insult that's still being used? <laughs> yeah, who's that? Was it ever being used? Yeah, who is it? Jesus, this is <laughs> sounding like. Well, a comic book! Which, yeah, obviously yeah, it it's is. based on a comic book, yeah. maybe that's the idea, <laughs> that's... but it's supposed to be a movie first. And a movie for adults, for that matter. These are sounding like lines you hear the from best... a Ninja Turtles cartoon. I think the Johnny best comic sort of style movie is uh, in Into out? the Spider-Verse. Hey, you're uh, the you one who's out, Chrome Dome, out of your mind! So, <laughs> this movie that came out, it's really good. Into the Spider-Verse, I believe it's called. How about that painfully really good. forced scene with the New Yorker standing triumphant against, <laughs> well, a, a flying green goblin? <laughs> yeah. Man, you mess with New York! You mess with one of us, you mess with all of us! Really? Okay, wow. It was after 9-11, <laughs> folks. We, uh, yeah. we really felt that spirit, even though it was a little corny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's fucked up. <laughs> well, there's no that's denying that the lines in this movie certainly sound like a comic book. I just wish it didn't sound like a 1960s comic book. It's you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. Oh, that sucks. Number three. Number three. Emo Peter. Yeah, y'all knew this was coming. Emo Peter. Emo I love my Emo Peter. He's totally awesome. The dance moves. <laughs> if not all the Spider-Man. And I'd be Here lying if I said I didn't understand why. Again, when I did read Spider-Man, I dug the stuff with the alien suit. In fact, that's one of the only Spider-Man collections I had. <laughs> I knew the story. Peter is supposed to be tortured by the suit, the same way a crack addict is or Gollum was from Lord yeah. of the Rings. It's one of those tragic attractions that just kept killing him. Mm. And it was good. It was a good, good story. While that was tragic, <laughs> though, Peter goes more for comedy. Yeah, and it's just... It's just... Geeky. I know that's weird to say that, but it's just geeky. 
Well, I mean, he's a geek. Yeah, so. he's a geek. Look at that. I got that. <laughs> I do that every time I buy a suit. Pushing. Yeah, if they I they do that. More serious route, this movie could every have time you get a brand new back. suit or but when you see him dancing new like pair of that shoes, and acting so goofy, you feel like it's a million bucks. sucked into the torment he's supposed to be feeling. He doesn't have to dress different or comb his hair down. Yeah. Frodo didn't need just to do that. Just has to do, do evil people shit. People in for a dream didn't need to do that. But yeah, I totally do that, Don. Every time I get a new T-shirt or a pair of trainers, a little comedy is okay. I just feel like a million. Million bucks, honestly. Edward territory. When he does finally act mean and crazy, it's not really believable. Except yeah, maybe the stuff with the Sandman, but that's identifiable. He killed his uncle. Then yeah, he can't so. see the hair combed in front of his mask. But trust me, if he could, he would. And on a side <laughs> note, I was really looking forward to that dream sequence done in the comic. Especially if Sam Raimi was doing it. It was in the comic, it was even in the cartoon. It'd be a fitting way to show the struggle that was going on in Pete's head. Mm. But nope, we got chocolate chip cookies and milk. <laughs> chocolate chip. Yeah, this wasn't Bad really ass. evil Spider-Man. I was expecting Spider-Man to start hurting people. Number two. Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin. When I heard Willem Dafoe also. was going to be the Green Goblin, I was hyped. I was like, oh mm. yeah, that's the perfect choice. No question <laughs> about it. But when he goes over the top, he really goes over the top. So many good things. All I like his voice though. You, his voice is amazing for, for this. I guess that fucking costume didn't help much either. <laughs> Did you ever see the original designs? They were actually pretty creative and awesome. Mm. And yet this is what they went with? No wonder he turned in the performance he did. Think about it, hero! The acting is traditional over-the-top Jekyll and Hyde. It's bad to be over the top voice, makes big creepy oh, uh, faces, and plays you know, innocent and mean when he has to confront his other self. Overacting is bad every time you saw him on screen before the transformation, he was a threatening and demanding <laughs> person. But as soon as he has to act against himself, he's a frightened, scared little bird. <laughs> you killed them. We killed them. Well, we're suffering from a Remember? sort of split personality with two to you, identities. So compensating so, one side to make the other side look more You know, they're two different... It looks silly, but... It looks silly. Imagine if he joined us. <laughs> I'm also shocked that this guy uses gas in a building miles high where the wind can blow it away. And on top of that, he actually says sleep. Sleep. <laughs> Don't you love it when you attack somebody, how you tell them to be attacked? Hey, what can I do for you? You will please be unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> Was he passing gas while passing gas? <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> Every time he was on screen, I didn't know how people didn't just burst out into laughing. I, I mean, didn't. Look at this I moment. think he's... We I don't know. I found him. it really good. I can't. Betrayal must not be countenanced. It's a fucking Walmart mask on a chair. Was this <laughs> yeah, supposed Walmart to be mask. threatening? <laughs> yes, it's true. It dead. is key fader. Yes. And then grant his wish. But how? Yeah, I doubt it to keep me on to. He does everything over the top villains do. He laughs, he says cliche lines, he even sings. Itsy bitsy spider when up the water spouts. When will the overacting ever stop? How like I said, better overact than under the prayer. Act. That's. I don't know what that is. <laughs> finish it. Finish it. Oh, evil. <laughs> Tonight on America's funniest prairie sightings. But the weirdest moment, and isn't that saying a great deal, is when they're on the rooftop and they're just talking. Hmm. Well, to each his own. I chose my path. You chose the way of the hero. <laughs> and they found you amusing for a while. No. Nobody can have a conversation wearing these costumes. <laughs> yeah, it's just this is impossible. A bit, One of a bit you has to laugh. I could squash you like a bug right now. I know I lost it when I saw the Green Goblin do this. <laughs> Here's the real truth. This got it's to be the funny. silliest image ever. Is he trying to act like he's just at the water cooler? Hey, <laughs> Spider Man, yo, rap with me, brother. Not to say I don't have fun watching him, because I do. But I guess if it's supposed to be taken he wanted to turn Spider-Man well, into a mentor, so to speak. Misery, misery, well, misery, he wanted to teach him. He wanted a son of his own. And the number one dumbest Spider-Man moment is... Number one. Even though he had a son. Scene. 
No, yeah, that sounds. I may like Spider-Man three, but anyone can tell you that this <laughs> is the dumbest thing yeah. ever. It breaks the mood. Uh, it changes it everything. Does. It sucks it's out just any what the amount fuck. of seriousness you were going. It's a weird, Let me tell you, unique when people this. saw this poster and they saw this <laughs> trailer, this is not what they were expecting to mm. see. This is straight up Jerry Lewis. What, right what the out fuck of the is this? La La Land? But by Spider-Man movie standards, this is too silly. It's like if Superman got on stage and tap danced. Or if Wolverine <laughs> went to a burlesque and did the Oh god, no. That's if, wrong. No, that did not happen. Oh, the fucking but what bothered me god. personally <laughs> about this scene is the scene that follows. We go from something so silly and so over the top to Peter hitting his girlfriend and then crouched over a church. Mm. Now, obviously, this is your big emotional moment of the movie. But a few seconds ago, it was followed by this. <laughs> That doesn't work. You can't throw yeah. all those things together one after another. It's not dramatic enough. <laughs> I'm a monster. <laughs> I mean, look at this. If I just showed you this without any context, would you ever guess that this was from a Spider-Man movie? Mm -mm. No, you'd say it was an outtake from the movie Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah Chicago, from Chicago. Would be this silly. For many people, this is what killed Spider-Man 3 for them. This was the step that mm. went too far. A lot of they people hate this scene. Yeah, this They could yeah, even survive emo Peter, people. but they couldn't survive this. It was mm. too cartoony, too out of nowhere, yeah. and too far removed from anything. I don't mind it to be honest. I'm, I'm, I've adapted to bad movies. So yeah, Spider-Man Three has the absolute worst moment of all mm. the movies. But does that mean it deserves to be shunned away from the others? No. Why was this one deemed so terrible when the other two had silly moments as well? Yeah. My thought is it's one of two reasons. Either audiences were finally sick of all the silliness and wanted a more grown-up <laughs> comic book movie. Thank you. Or maybe Sam Raimi <laughs> pushed the boundaries of what he could get away with and simply went that too was far. A good movie. I personally would like to see a more serious Spider-Man movie made. I know mm -hmm. Sam Raimi can direct serious films. I mean, really good ones. <laughs> so I guess I was a little disappointed when I saw the tone these movies were going for. Yeah. But when I calmed down, I did see the hard work that was put into them and how a lot of the issues they discussed do still hold up. Mm. Like I said, though, I just wouldn't take it too seriously. Yeah. It's goofy, fun action that actually does have some dramatic moments every once in a while. They're not masterpieces, but I don't think they're supposed to be. Yeah, they're just silly comic book movies, nothing more. Mm -hmm. I keep hearing they're gonna do a reboot of these movies, and oh, God. Yes, I'm pretty curious yeah, to see. Yeah, they did. Maybe the new films I didn't will like find them. a more serious road, which I'll they admit is a horrible. challenge. Costume heroes are hard to take seriously, but movies have shown that it not only can be done, but it can be done very well. And until that reboot comes out, I'm gonna enjoy all the silliness and over-the-top scenes that these movies have to offer. Every web-slinging minute. <laughs> I'm the nostalgia critic. I remember it, so you don't have to. The end. Okay, that's the end of it. Finish it! <laughs> yeah, finish, finish it! it. <laughs> evil! I shall fear no evil. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah. Uh, that was Top 11 Dumbest Spider-Man Moments by the Nostalgia Critic. I have to conquer. <laughs> <laughs> as I um uh, love that word conquer. What's that word from uh, that conquer word? That was like, do you concur? <laughs> it's from that um movie, uh, Catch Me If You Can. I believe it was called. Do you concur, Doctor? <laughs> I'd love that scene. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, I, I agree with nostalgia critic. You know, this was um cheesy. The dance scene, Peter Parker. It really broke the immersion of the Spider-Man movie. Uh, it killed it for a lot of people, um, but it didn't kill it for me. I, I enjoy Tobey Maguire's performance in all of the, uh, the um, Spider-Man movies. I nearly said <laughs> Star Trek. Uh, why am I thinking of Star Trek? I've got Star Trek on my mind. Um, but it's uh, Tobey Maguire playing as Patrick Picard. Oh, Jesus, what the hell is going on with my head? Uh, but uh, yeah, um, I mean, I found it very fascinating, the Spider-Man movies. I really enjoyed all of them, uh, all the Tobey Maguire ones, all the new ones i'm not really enjoying them um apart from the the uh like the iron man sort of spider-man one uh it was pretty good i like those ones uh, i like that actor um but uh yeah i totally agree uh the peter parker dancing scene it broke the immersion it killed it for a lot of people 
but I, I, I like these sort of uh, bad movies. I've got a taste for them. Um, well, some bad movies, but it's got to be charmingly bad, you know, like Dungeons and Dragons and uh, The Room. Um, you know, it's got to be charmingly bad. You know, it's got to charm you with its badness where you can have a chuckle and a laugh and it can get a point with that because it's really hard to make a bad movie, but make it really good. Um, a really good bad movie to watch. Um, but what I would call Spider-Man is sort of like a popcorn movie, so to speak. Uh, you don't really have to pay attention to the story much. It's something that you come home to after work. You can plop it on, on your Blu-ray or whatever, and just chill out, watch some Spider-Man, the first movie, have a bit of popcorn and lay in bed and sleep to it. You know, this is, uh, sort of the movie, uh, should be free on Netflix or Amazon Prime. You know, you shouldn't really buy it. Well, you can if you want, um, but this is something that should be free um on netflix or your a streaming service um but uh yeah that's uh everything i have to say if you like this video make sure to give a like comment down below and make sure to uh, subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content i'll see you guys in the next video peace <laughs>